This is the Barbados Today Afternoon News for Wednesday, March 28th. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Visiting economics professor Andrew Bose is predicting that current Brexit negotiations will create economic turmoil for Barbados and the rest of the Caribbean. Professor Bose was the guest speaker at the Central Bank of Barbados' fifth economic forum last night. I can't imagine that we'll see any serious negotiations concluded for Brexit um, over the foreseeable future. And that's just going to lead to tremendous uncertainty for anything that's related to British commerce. And certainly Barbados is very seriously affected because the UK sends lots of tourists down here and they're involved in lots of other businesses directly. That's not going to be good news for um, the countries in the Caribbean that, that do lots of business with the UK. Well, in some sense, you want the, um, the Brexit negotiations to be tough because the, um, Barbados and, and none of the Caribbean countries are at all directly affected, so you want the UK to turn more away from the European Union towards other countries with which it uh, engages in commerce. But that said, anything that adversely affects the UK is going to be bad for anyone doing business with it. Um, if I were... Um, <clears throat> in charge, and I have no desire to be in charge, I would say diversification away from the UK is a good idea, and Latin America seems to be the most obvious choice for um, the countries in the Caribbean. Police are reporting a number of stolen checks currently in circulation. They were stolen from the Royal Bank of Canada's Hastings branch and were drawn from the Surfers Bay account, number 000030 through to 000 Police spokesman, Acting Inspector Rodney Innes, says businesses and other members of the public should not accept these checks as they are considered worthless. Anyone who encounters these checks is asked to contact the Police Financial Crimes Investigation Unit at telephone number 430-4194 or 430-4195 or the nearest police station. Perpetrators of domestic violence are being warned that they can no longer act with impunity. The warning has come from High Court Judge Madam Justice Jacqueline Cornelius as she handed down a nine-year jail sentence to St. Lucian Cuthbert Joseph. He was convicted of slashing the face of his son's mother, Margaret Christophe, two years ago. Cornelius said the state is responsible through the criminal justice system to not only protect women from the scourge, but also to indicate that such cases will be dealt with seriously. Transport and Works Minister Michael Lashley is calling for maintenance contracts to be included in road development projects. Lashley says this will be applied to both private developments and the public sector. Mainly are constructing roads that they should be provisioned within the contractual arrangement for the maintenance of that road for more than five years or beyond so that the contractor will have the responsibility and build into the contract his expenses billing that he will be able to um, maintain that road within a five year period of course uh, to the not to the expense of the taxpayers but of course that if we leave the road there before the maintenance contract by the main contractor then the ministry have to step in and do the maintenance and it obviously is a cost to the taxpayers and also it's time consuming uh, giving us the elbow room now to go to other roads um, throughout Barbados in St. Michael East, um, St. Lucie and, and, and all about Barbados. There's regional and international news after this short break.
Thank you for staying with us. We're back with news from the region. There is an ongoing debate in St. Lucia over the future of health care, and Prime Minister Alan Chastney is seeking to allay fears that some critical services may be privatized. We get more in this report from HDS News. Talk of privatization of the Owen King EU Hospital has raised concern across segments of society. Last week, the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association called for open dialogue on the status of healthcare in St. Lucia and warned government against rushing to privatization without consultation. The Prime Minister says the message has been sent out clearly. They want to scare people that you're not going to be able to afford anything. And I don't buy the argument that my government is not communicating that message to people. We've said it over and over and over again. But there are people who don't want to hear that because that's the solution that people want to hear. Everybody wants to believe it's more difficult than that. While he did not outline the specific course of action that will be taken on health care, the Prime Minister says his administration is aware that some difficult decisions are needed to bring about access to affordable, quality health services for citizens. Decisions that are going to be to the benefit of all St. Lucians. That's what we're going to make. So when people want to talk about whether it's a PPP, whether it's going to privatize, St. Jude's is a statutory agency that used to be privately run. The board now is us and the money is us. But the fact is, it's an independent board. And I challenge anybody to tell me that St. Jude's is not a better run facility than Victoria. And that is not taking anything away from the nurses and the doctors and the people who are working at Victoria. It's not them that's the problem. It's the administration. The fact is, is that it's difficult for those things to operate under government because it's conflicting with all the other resources that we need. I mean, I, I, I walk through there in less than eight hours and you can see the amount of problems that are plaguing them because it's, a, it's under a government structure. The Prime Minister told the House that his administration is not the only one struggling with the health services financing issue. He says the former SLP government did not know how it would meet the cost of providing health services at the OKEU hospital. Over in Jamaica, Parliament has approved the extension of the state of emergency in the St. Catherine North area. The measure was put in place on March 18 in a bid to curb criminal activity. 49 lawmakers were present for the vote in Parliament earlier this week and they all approved the extension to July 3rd. Prime Minister Andrew Holness declared the state of emergency on March 18 for 14 days after 48 people were killed between January 1st and March 18. Opposition leader Peter Phillips says the measure should be employed sparingly. And on the international scene, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has pledged his commitment to meet U.S. officials. The announcement from China on Wednesday after his meeting with the Chinese President Xi Jinping. The details in this Reuters report. It's where nuclear scientists are national heroes, where ice monuments are built in honor of missile tests, and the nuclear warhead is a treasured sword of justice. North Korea's nuclear propaganda has been built over decades by a dynasty who's wielded the nuclear narrative as a key part of regime power at home. Unraveling that story may be a challenge for North Korean leader Kim Jong-un if he pursues a Korean peninsula without nuclear weapons. South Korean envoys who met with Kim in Pyongyang this month quoted him saying he was committed to denuclearization a claim repeated by Chinese officials who attended a secret summit with Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing this week. But to do so, Kim would need to tread carefully at home, and so far North Korean state media haven't run that story or anything on a planned meeting with US President Donald Trump. North Korean state media is highly controlled, and when they do report on going-ons in the country, it usually comes after the government has made a move one way or another. Experts say the shift would be hard but not impossible and getting rid of nuclear weapons could be a long process that could easily take a decade. That means time would be on Kim's side, allowing him to sell the process to North Koreans over many years. Especially if Kim manages to get concessions from US President Donald Trump, like the removal of US troops from the Korean Peninsula at a summit slated to happen by the end of May.
That's news this afternoon. Remember, you can get more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and on screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marie Claire Williams. Good afternoon.